Hi there. In this video today, I'm going to show you how you can obtain code coverage in conjunction with LDRE Tool Suite using CPV test. So what you can see here is the function I'm trying to test. And the actual project that we're looking at is just meant to simulate a gear system for a car. And this particular function is meant to see whether a change of gear is appropriate given a number of different parameters. So one being the current gear, the target gear, the RPM, and the current um, fuel pressure. But the particular parameters that we're interested in is the RPM. So we're going to return the value of the RPM at the end of the function. And this is the um, variable that we're going to be checking the value of uh, on the function's conclusion. So if I go to the test harness, we can see that I've set up a test group with a number of different parameters that have been initialized, one being the RPM. And then I've then set up three tests that will then test the value for RPM at the end of the function. So in this first case, I'm expecting a value of zero. And for the second test case, I've initialized a number of different values. I'm expecting a value of 4,000. And in the last test, I'm expecting a value of 8,000 given the parameters set here. So if I then go to my main, within my main function, I've got the test runner which will then call all the tests that have been created within my test harness and we then should be able to see uh, whether these tests actually successfully pass and the expected values are what we um, actually get so if I go to my terminal and just run my build script that is successfully built and create an executable and if I just go ahead and run that executable see that the tests have successfully passed. So what I now want to do is to actually get coverage for um, these tests, I can then interrupt my code. So this is where I'm able to obtain coverage through the use of probes. So if I go ahead and run my uh, build and instrument script, I can see within this process that the um, source code has now been instrumented and then a executable that has instrumentation within it is then built. So what I can now do is once I've run my um, newly created executable, I can see that the tests have successfully passed and the instrumentation has no effect on the outcome of the tests. If I just go and check what files have now been created, I can see that we now have a was known as an execution history file, which is how we actually um, check whether, um, was and how much the source code has actually been executed. So if I then run my um, coverage report shell script, I can then use that execution history file to actually um, produce a coverage report. So what we can see here is our code coverage report. And it gives a full breakdown for our statement branch and MCDC coverage. So this is for the test that we run. So we can see here that we were able to achieve um, coverage of three for each of these lines of code. This is because we've run um, three different tests. And in particular, we can see that certain conditions have been met, and as such have been executed three times, whereas certain uh, conditions haven't been met at all. Um, within the three tests. So what we could do is to increase this, we could run some more tests where these particular conditions are satisfied. So if I then go on to the branch decision coverage table, I can see any particular branch points that have been executed or if they haven't. So this would indicate points where we may need to change some of the tests that we're running. Um, within the MCDC, uh, truth table, I can see any sort of um, pairs that may need to be executed in terms of the uh, state of decisions in order to actually achieve MCDC coverage. So this is helpful for standards such as DO178 or ISO 262. Uh, it just depends on which standard you're trying to follow. Thanks for watching. If you require any assistance on the topics discussed in this video, please don't hesitate to contact us via the channel shown here.